All right. So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. I am also checking on the side on my mobile on YouTube as well. I see about 150 plus participants have joined us and the numbers are just increasing. This is amazing. Thank you so much to all the principals and teachers who have joined us today. Once again, a very, very good morning. Um, as you all know, today's session is a quick orientation for all the teachers and principals on the new initiative called the AI Startup School for CBSC Schools. Um, just give me one second. I see a distortion here. One moment. Sorry, yeah, here we go again. Yeah, so uh, today's orientation is on IBM's AI Startup School for CBSC Schools, which is an initiative to actually nurture students to come with AI innovations and help them scale it up further. Right, And as you can see on the screen, a couple of interesting things, AI for good workshop, certification for students, a personal skills scorecard for students and school, invitation for top teams to opportunities in Silicon Valley, and of course, felicitation for schools with maximum participation. I'll take you through all of this, what it means, what are the opportunities, what is the program in a while? So just to let you know and to give you a context, um, IBM has been associated with CBSE for the last uh, four years now. Uh, and before I take you through all that, in case your school hasn't registered for the program yet, here is the QR code. You can scan it or you can even use this link, bit.ly slash AI Startup School 2022, and you can register. So I'll just give you a few seconds in case you want to scan. And then I will, in fact, take you through the complete process as we go. And of course, I'll share this in the end as well once we complete the complete orientation. In fact, what we'll do now is I'll take you through what the program is about, what is the process, how do you participate, uh, what are the opportunities you get. And when we end, we also want to make sure this is quite an informative session for you. So we'll also take you a little bit about the interesting use case of AI. What are some of the cool things that's happening in AI now as well? So towards the end, we'll talk about that as well. So it's not just an orientation, it's also an information session for you. All right, so I hope you have scanned and you have registered already. If you have registered, great. In case you haven't, please do register. So if, as you see on the screen, our Honorable Prime Minister and the entire government is looking at making India the global hub for AI and wonderful innovations coming from India, right? Just like the Silicon Valley of the US and the other countries um, that are leading the race in AI, as always, the innovations coming from India unmatched. And we hope to become the global hub for AI, become a testing place for AI, place where you know AI entrepreneurs, AI developers, AI creators come out. So with this vision, we actually started the whole program in 2019. Anita Karwal, ma'am, had uh, inaugurated the complete program. Then Dr. Shah has been super supportive, and so has been R.P. Singh, sir, and the rest of the CBSC team. And over the last couple of years, from 2019 till now, till the academic year that just ended in 2022, over 150,000 students have been trained on AI, and 16,000 plus teachers have also been trained to take AI as a subject. Um, now, thanks to all the incredible work going on, AI has been introduced as an elective subject for grades 11th and 12th by CBSE, and we have a good number of schools and students uh, picking up the subject. So great to see that traction uh, from the students to build that AI ecosystem of our country. We have a number of resources that has been put together, the teacher instruction manual for teachers, a project guide and project logbook, which gives steps on how to build an AI project. And and through the complete program, we are nurturing students, not just AI is just another subject, but as you learn, try your hands on it. You know, we are encouraging students to build AI projects, come up with ideas. We pick the best ideas, mentor them. And then we have like a shark tag kind of pitch format where the students pitch their presentation, the prototype, and the top students are given an opportunity to be an intern at IBM. So we did two internships of IBM uh, last two years, virtual internships, incredible for the students, two weeks of complete learning, interacting with global IBM experts from the AI field with and other technology experts. We are having the next internship later in December this year for the students who completed last year. And this year, I'll take you through what the plan is again, you know, what is planned for 2022, 23. So it's been a gradual process across the years, what we have built and looking forward to continuing this. Now we have built the excitement in the students. We have helped them come with ideas. Now, how do we help them scale this further? That is our aim for this year. 
And as part of the program, a number of things have uh, taken place. I'll just give you some of these over the last couple of years. We had um, problem solvers challenge last year where students submit ideas using AI for a problem they wish to solve in the community. Um, we have this platform called IBM Skills Build, a free to use platform where students can learn tons of things. A uh, very good course on AI as well. Uh, some of the top students are given various opportunities. In fact, what you see here is Mohini from DPS Bangalore East, who was winners, one of the winners of the EdTech Youth Challenge last year. And she had the opportunity to interact with the director of IBM Research when he was down here. So a lot of such opportunities coming up. There is another opportunity coming up for students this week as part of a uh, government partners meet where they're presenting the AI projects and there's a Think Summit of IBM happening next month where some of the, again, top students are presenting. And of course, even for schools who are doing really well through the program um, where, you know, a lot of students are participating, completing courses, getting themselves updated on the new emerging technology. We're getting different, different opportunities for showcasing them as well. These are, again, some of the pictures from uh, the last couple of years in terms of the trainings, uh, the mentoring sessions, some of the student projects that's going on. A very, very exciting journey. And no, thanks to all the good work, a lot of coverage in the press as well in terms of uh, the partnership between IBM and CBC and along with that, the student projects, you know, the top projects of how students are using AI to solve some of the big issues like healthcare, um, you know, in, in, in terms of uh, fighting fake news, in terms of helping people cope with the pandemic. So different projects that have come out. Now, overall, if you see, you know, globally, why is it important for students to learn AI? Of course, they're learning a new technology, but take a look at what's on the screen, right? Two million jobs are going to be generated just by 2025, uh, thanks to AI. And also, a PwC report states, states that, you know, AI will contribute to about $15.7 trillion to the global economy by 2030. That's just another eight years from now. So the potential that AI unlocks is incredible. And it also gives us an opportunity, right? Some of the big problems that we have been facing from centuries, a technology can, like AI can help solve that. And that's what we are trying to do by inspiring students and giving them the tools to come up with these AI-based solutions to solve our age-old issues. And take a look at some of these job titles. I'm not sure how many of you have heard many of these, but these are some that I'm hearing for the first time. Data detective, AI business development manager, there is a fitness commitment counselor, cyber city analyst, digital trade tailor. I'm not sure what that means, but a digital tailor is a job title. And these are new job titles that are actually existing. There are companies who are hiring for these jobs. Chief trust officer, personal memory curator. I mean, like these were things of fiction a couple of years back. And now these are all things that are from the sci-fi movies coming real. And we need to ensure our students are prepared for it. And I would... In, invite all schools to take up AI in some form or the other. AI is also part of the CBSE um, SEVA program where students can learn AI foundations and build a project. So different ways in which students can try this out and then think of taking it as an elective. So in case your school hasn't taken AI as an elective, that's completely fine. You can still register. We'll take some foundation sessions for students and let's see, you know, what are the innovations they come out with and we'll be happy to showcase the good ones that come out. Now coming to the AI Startup School program, right? So as I mentioned, it is a continuation of the work we have been doing over the last few years. Uh, we have students who are, inquiry, uh, who are excited about AI who are coming up with solutions. Now we want to help, help them nurture this and scale this forward. So the idea of the program is to enable the young talent of India to solve some of the big issues that a country is facing using AI and empower the next generation of AI innovators and entrepreneurs, um, giving them a platform to transform the ideas into ventures and providing them with global mentoring and opportunity and exposure and help them become AI creators and AI entrepreneurs, right? And AI economy, a creator economy is of course on right now. A AI economy that's coming up to build the AI ecosystem of India, that's the whole objective of the complete program that we do. Now, okay, let me quickly take you through the different steps. You have of course seen this on the CBC circular that came out, but I'll just take you through the steps that is involved, right? First and foremost, you have to register your school using the link that I share. I'll share the QR code as well as the link again. It's available on the CPC circular as well. Once you register for the school, we will reach out to you. Um, we are uh, from CBSC training partner 1M1B, and we will, in fact, conduct an AI for good workshop for you in the school. It will be a 90 minutes to two hour workshop where we'll take students to the foundations of AI, how AI is used to solve different issues, and then we redirect them to a uh, learning path on IBM skills build platform where students can actually complete an AI foundation certificate certification course and get a certificate. Uh, once they do that, they can form teams of up to three 
students and one teacher coordinator and participate in missions on this platform called Leadsy World, which is a platform from one and one B, a very, very interesting platform where it is mainly for students and teachers with a number of challenges. Students and teachers can go and participate in challenges and win rewards. And I'll show a screenshot of that ahead as well. Once that is done, based on the missions, based on the points that you get, top 100 students or teams are selected to be part of the AI Startup School experience. Now, AI Startup School as such is a nine day mentoring program, a boot camp where for nine days, students are taught different ways in which you know, they've already submitted ideas. How do you take that ideas to market in case you're interested and build maybe a venture out of it, right? And the top 10 teams present on pitch day in a sharp bang like format to judges and the best students are further given opportunities. You know, we want to ensure that the top students and the top projects are guided towards different opportunities like call for code by IBM, Smart India Hackathon, <coughs> excuse me, the Manic Awards, etc. And one top team from this complete program, right, will win global opportunities at Silicon Valley. So it's going to be immersive experience for them, a visit there. They get to participate, interact with, um, go to the global IBM office, interact with AI experts, a very, very global immersive experience for the students. Again, as I mentioned, if your school hasn't registered, here is the link again. We start with the AI for Good workshop. Post that you students complete an AI certification course on skills build, then complete challenges on Leadsy. The top students are invited to be part of the nine day boot camp as part of AI startup school. And then the top 10 teams are selected on pitch day, right? So this is the program as such again. Again, registration link for you. As I mentioned, IBM skills build for students. You can try this out. The website is skillsbuild.org. You can go ahead and check it out. In, in fact, to log in, you will need to register first uh, for the program and we'll at, at the back end add all the email IDs of the students and enroll your school so students can participate. Though it's a completely free to use platform, um, it's on invite only basis. So you can, of course, go to the website and try it out. But at the same time, to complete a certification course, you receive an invitation for which you need to be part of this program and for which you need to register on the link shed. Right? So skillsbuilt.org is the website. Very interesting website, not just AI, you will find different courses on cybersecurity. Uh, you will find courses on design thinking. You'll find courses on data science. Anything related to tech and non-tech as well, you can learn on skills bill for students. This is not just for students, it's for teachers as well. There's a very interesting certification course called IBM AI Foundations for Educators, where it gives you, I think, nine modules, which has step-by-step one-hour modules on how exactly do you take AI to your students. So it's very interesting for teachers as well. Hi, Highly encourage you to go and participate and check the website out. Uh, the other website that I mentioned, leadsyworld.com, where students participate in challenges once you're part of the program. It's got a dashboard like this, where uh, it shows you how many challenges you participate in your profile. It's and it's again private. You know, it's only the student gets to see number of challenges. So overall, the different challenges we had, even the problem solvers challenge for IBM CBC last year, we are hosted here. Students come and participate in different challenges. They get points. There is a leaderboard. So based on the points that you get, there on the leaderboard, and once they achieve certain points, let's say one thousand or uh, two thousand points, they get to redeem it for different opportunities. And there is also a school leaderboard that shows. Um, how many students from different schools have participated. So it becomes easy for us to track and tell you, you know, how many students have participated. And based on the participation from the students from the schools, schools with maximum participation, we want to ensure we give you showcase opportunities. We give you special opportunities to share with the world how you're encouraging students to be part of AI. And then of course, you can log in and test out the website as well. Number of active challenges there as well. It's leadsyworld.com. Uh, because we are nurturing Generation Z, it's called leadsy, leadsyworld.com, right? Okay, and as part of the overall AI startup school experience, what do students get? This is the complete program, but over the nine days, which is a focused mentorship bootcamp, they get a number of things. Now, one is, of course, they get to innovate for India, innovate for Bharat, you know, the people in need from the underserved communities, from the, the villages, the farmers, the people in rural areas who don't have healthcare, any problem. They get to innovate using AI to solve the problem and find solutions for that issue. Uh, post that, you know, on Leadsy, as you participate in challenges, students get a very personalized scorecard assessing them on their future skills. So we are mainly looking at problem solving, collaboration, creativity, uh, communication, etc. So they get a scorecard at the end of it saying, hey, this is how you stand, these are the skills you have. On problem solving, you have a score of 80%. On creativity, you have a score of 70%. So it's very interesting how it is a future-based future skill scorecard, and it's mapped to the 
future skills um, our fourth industrial revolution skills that the world economic forum has come up with then as part of the nine day boot camp students learn how to start launch their startup uh, what are the different processes involved how do you understand ip rights and then, you know, there's mentors coming in. We have very interesting global mentors coming. There is an Oscar winning filmmakers who join in. There are CEOs, there are startup entrepreneurs who come in, uh, IBM experts coming in. Once the mentoring is done, the top projects are given various speaking opportunities. And at the same time, they also get to prototype and test uh, their, uh, the solution on ground. So this is what the program uh, nine days will include. And let me just take you uh, one step further inside and show you what the mentoring bootcamp involves, right? So seven main things in the bootcamp. We help students understand the problem better and how AI is related to it, show them different use cases, scenarios, what has worked, what could work. Then once you understand the problem, understanding the user, understanding the user segment, who are you actually building it for? Is it for an urban crowd? Is it for rural crowd? Is it for youngsters? Is it for adults? So we help them think through that. Then how do you leverage AI? Now it's not necessary that you force fit AI, right? AI is used when it can, solve a particular issue better than the in, in existing solutions. And at the same time, how do you in, in, increase the scale of the solution? So how do you leverage AI and other technologies as well? Um, then we help them ideate on using AI into it, creating an AI-based solution, mentoring them on that, coming up with a prototype and how do you test it out? How do you protect your IP, file, patents, etc.? All of this comes in here. Then we tell them, how do you pitch? Having a solution is great. There are a number of solutions that come up from even the smallest of towns in India, but not many come into the limelight, right? So we want to show them, how can you use videos? How can you use different media to ensure that you get visibility for a project? The world knows about it. So pitching, storytelling is very important elements of it. We have that. And finally, we tell them, how do you launch your solutions? Now, launching need not necessarily be starting a startup. So if any student is interested, they can do that. But at the same time, how do you reach out to different uh, opportunities and platforms like IBM's Call for Code, uh, Smart India Hackathon, Manika Awards, et cetera. And they also have the opportunity to continue their careers and launch the innovations with the help of a mentor. So the students are part of the program. We are always available to them, even after the program, to help them mentor and take their solutions forward. So this is what happens in the camp. I am not sure if the chat is enabled. I don't think the chat is enabled on YouTube. That's completely fine. Uh, you can register and then once you get in touch with you, you can reach out to us and ask us any queries that you have. So as part of the complete program, if you look at it, AI is one element of it, but they learn design thinking, entrepreneurial mindset, problem solving, ideation process, understanding intellectual property rights, business models. Now having a solution is great. Now what is the different things you need to look at to make into a business? Storytelling. How do you pitch in two minutes your complete idea? All these are key learnings for the students. And of course, you know, they interact with global leaders, people from the ecosystem, learn from their experience, what have they done, um, you know, get them excited on a career in AI maybe. You know, we have had students over the last few years who have been part of the program, part of the internship and say that, hey, you know what, now I'm really excited in AI. I want to pursue a career in AI. I would like to do something maybe in engineering and then look at a master's in AI. So those have been like really interesting success stories for us and give us pleasure that, Hey, the program is great, but at the same time, there are certain students who have actually been helped in identifying the passion and their career. So that's the objective of the program as well. Opportunities I talked about, and importantly, the opportunity at Silicon Valley for top students. This is something we're bringing this year. Very, very interesting. One top team of up to three students and one teacher coordinator will be invited uh, for the immersive experience at Silicon Valley. I also want to bring in some important points to you as part of the program. So eligibility, if you look at it, the workshop is open for all students from grade six and above. I would highly encourage you to have conduct the workshop for grade six and above. Based on the number of students in your school, we can do multiple sessions as well, uh, virtually as well as offline as possible. But the AI Startup School Bootcamp, the nine days, that is applicable only for grades nine to 12. Now, considering this is on um, startups, venturing out and scaling up the model, et cetera, we want to ensure it's for the right audience, right? But top students from grade six to eight will also be provided with incentives and rewards. They can be part of the challenges, everything, except that for the nine days, it's only grades nine to 12. The other thing is uh, students from grade 11 and 12, they are supposed to do an AI capstone project if you've taken AI as an elective. So the project you do here, the idea you do here, you're getting mentored on, you can consider this for a capstone project as well. So you don't have to do two things separately. You get world-class mentoring for your capstone project. So how cool is that, right? Uh, when you're forming teams, 
that comes in a little later. Of course, when you're forming teams, you can have a maximum of three students and one teacher coordinator from the school can be part of the team. All the workshops, all the platforms, everything we have discussed here are completely free of cost. So again, no restriction here. All schools are invited. The top students and teacher team that is invited for the global opportunity at Silicon Valley, all the expenses for the visit will be uh, sponsored once you are in the US. However, the flight tickets and the visa expense, that is something that is very personal and individual. That needs to be taken care of either by the students or the school can uh, you know, take care of it. So that's one uh, you know, uh, ask we have from you if your team is a top team invited for the uh, showcase opportunity. We'll take care of the expenses once you're in the US associated there, but in terms of flight tickets and expenses is on the school or the students. So any queries, again, AI for CBSE at gmail.com, you can reach out. We'll be happy to answer any queries and hope to see most of you enroll into the program. And again, I was saying, you know, uh, many students come with different projects. These are some snapshots, some interesting projects that came out. Uh, what I personally like is the one that is on the left side below one of the top projects. Students actually built a complete system, which is uh, solving the issue of uh, lack of access to good healthcare in rural areas. Uh, they build a prototype where you know uh, patients can come to the system. They can uh, tell their symptoms, and the AI system processes and tells them, you know, these are the medications to take. These are the uh, these is, this is the illness that you might have. And there is a doctor at the back end for safety to you know recheck that as well. Very interesting model. Uh, models that take care of traffic. Uh, plagiarism, you know, uh, helping people learn yoga, attendance system, taking care of uh, identifying different illnesses from x-rays using AI, different solutions, you know, things that you can even, can't even think of right now. Students have come with those kind of solutions. Very, very exciting to see how children have used AI and come up with solutions addressing real problems that a country is facing. Again, here's the link. I'll keep this on for a bit. And... Um, yeah, and this is mainly about the program. What I'll also do is I'll just give you a few seconds in case you haven't registered, register again. I will screen share and show you what IBM Skills Bill looks like. Okay, hope you have had the time to scan and uh, register as well. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to the um, circular that is there from CBSE as well. Okay, I see that uh, Ms. Joita from IBM has joined us. If I can request uh, the CBSE team, if you can make a Joita a panelist as well, we would love to have her join us for a few minutes and share a few words. May I request the CBSE uh, team if you can just make Joita a panelist as well. Meanwhile, I'll just go ahead and share my screen and show you what skills bill looks like. Uh, Ma'am, if you can just make Joita from the attendees and make her a panelist, that will be really helpful. Okay, now, as you can see on my screen, this is the website, right? Skillsbill.org. Once you open, you have different things mentioned there. What are the different opportunities coming up? How do you learn top skills, the courses? You have a section for learners, educators. So if you go into learners, you have high school students, you have college students, adult learners, educators for teachers separately for high school educators as a section. So different courses there. If you go into high school students, you'll see what all is available, right? A course on AI, cloud computing, blockchain, design thinking. Um, in fact, a lot of other courses as well. If you go into view all learning pathways, as you see, number of them, right? Uh, workplace skills, you come in, you get design thinking, mindfulness, professional skills, job readiness, sustainability. A lot of things that the students learn today, they can get expert learning from IBM Skills Bill and at the same time, get a certificate from IBM. You know, from global organization, getting a certificate is very valuable. Uh, you complete a course, get a certificate, get a badge, you can show it on your LinkedIn profile as well. So this is something you can really try out AI foundation scores, as I mentioned. So once you log in, you'll be able to see this, but at the same time, if you want to try it out just like that, you can simply go on to learners or educators, 
or rather you go to learners and then click on try it before you register, you will get to see the different courses you can try out. For example, AI has a small section of 45 minute course that tells you uh, the basics of AI. And we we'll cover this in our session, uh, AI for good workshop as well. So just to give you an overview of what skills will looks like. It's a fantastic platform. I personally have done a lot of courses on skills build and even from the feedback from teachers and students over the last couple of years, they love using it because a lot of information shared in a very interesting graphic video like format for students to learn and get certified. Right. So there's a small quiz at the end. You can look at careers in AI, how uh, other technologies help AI, can computers think. So it's, it's a very interesting course as well here. All right, so I also have um, Anit from my team who's joining us, who's gonna share a little bit about the different things that you can learn about AI, some info session on AI as well. Anit, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Safin. Hello everyone, hi, uh, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us on this Friday uh, morning. We hope that you have had uh, a fruitful session till now and you have uh, gotten an idea of what this whole AI startup school program is all about and how you can be a part of it. We are very excited to see all of you and your students being part of this program and you know going together on this journey of uh, developing AI solutions and uh, you know like becoming a part of this whole very exciting wave of AI artificial intelligence that is coming in uh, in our country and in the uh, in, in the rest of the world as well. So uh, talking a little bit about AI, right? Just to give you a taste of what our students are going to be talking about, discussing when they become a part of this program. The first thing is what artificial intelligence actually is, right? So uh, drawing parallels from human intelligence, right? Artificial intelligence is to and uh, essentially, essentially mimic the human intelligence right so if i can uh, look at the world like a human being do if i can uh, if if i can listen to sounds if i can produce sounds like a human being does so all of these things if we can enable a machine to perform these functions that is when we start saying that that machine has artificial intelligence and the idea is how do we uh, reduce the cognitive load how do we you know offload some of the mental tasks that we uh, we have uh, onto the machines right and so uh, like when the first industrial revolution happened we started offloading our physical labor our physical efforts to machines that is when automation started happening and if you look at the recent wave of industrialization that is happening it's all about getting uh, you know uh, rid of the cognitive load the mental task that we have and how can we use machines to help us perform some of these mental tasks and you know think like a human being uh, thinks so that is uh, that is The, the basic uh, idea behind artificial intelligence and talking about what all artificial intelligence can do, right? And then uh, going to give you, like, we are going to look at some very interesting, very fun, entertaining examples also to try to see what kind of solutions can our students come up with. And uh, these are purely for a demonstration purpose, but I hope that you will be able to draw an analogy of how these solutions can be helpful in solving some of the social and developmental challenges that we are facing um, in today's world. Yeah, so as I mentioned, right, there are essentially three things that an AI uh, can do, right? So it can look at the world just like we human beings do, right? So it can uh, look at a photo and it can figure out that, hey, there is a cat in this photo. It can look out uh, on, onto, onto a building and say, hey, this building is on fire. So maybe somebody should do something. It can look at uh, a particular person's face and say, hey, this person is very happy. Maybe, uh, you know, there is something very good going on in their life. So they can look at the world and they can process whatever they are looking at, just like we human beings do, right? And that is being extremely intelligent because I can make sense of the visual input that I'm taking in. The second thing that uh, artificial intelligence is very good at doing is or it is getting better and better at doing with every passing day is understanding human language. I'm sure uh, a lot of people who have joined us in the audience are from uh, or are familiar with computer programming languages. You have must have written uh, like one or the other kind of computer programs. 
you know and uh, you 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 would have seen that that language that the computer understands the language that we used to use to talk to computers uh, was different right it was not english it had its own syntax we use python language we use c++ we use c and then there are a lot of other programming languages also but now with the advent of artificial intelligence what is happening is that uh, our machines are able to understand languages just like we do so like i am talking to you my if I, I, I in a similar manner i can talk to a machine also right and just think about what kind of implications will it have when it comes to accessibility uh, of uh, and especially for the people who are uh, resource constrained or who have difficulties in you know day, doing their day to day activities also right so understanding human language that is another thing that our artificial intelligence is very good at now and then the third thing is looking at numbers processing numbers and i'm not just talking about let's say multiplying uh, two three digits number together right we are talking about like a large quantity of numbers here right something that we call as big data right when it comes to processing large amount of information whether it is textual information or whether it is numerical information artificial intelligence is uh, far ahead than what a human being can do when it comes to processing numbers because they have they like it is powered by these very like high uh, performance computers right and it can crunch numbers way faster than than we can ever uh, think of or we can ever imagine to do right so and why do we want to process these numbers right by processing these numbers we want to arrive at decisions we want to make predictions we want to make forecasts of what is going to happen so if i give you an example weather prediction is something that we use ai for right so looking back at all the past uh, weather data weather information that we have we would want to understand what is going to happen tomorrow or like 10 days from now also and that is where ai is being used a lot now and if you'll see our weather updates because of the involvement of artificial intelligence are getting more and more accurate previously there were people who used to crunch these numbers who will look at the data from uh, the past and they'll try to come up with a forecast but now we have artificial intelligent computers machines to do it for us and that is one of the reasons why we are getting more and more accurate weather updates right similarly if you would want to predict uh, let's say uh, which team is going to win a particular cricket match or how is the uh, stock market going to perform in the coming days or then uh, how many cars should a particular company manufacture based on different uh, you know different parameters that control how people spend their money and like when do they buy cars so all of these things can be decided if we are able to crunch these numbers if we are able to process these numbers and if we are able to arrive at a decision that okay this is something that might happen in the future right so these three things looking at the world uh, listening and being able to understand what uh, the world speaks or like human beings speak and then uh, processing numbers so these are the three things that primarily uh, ai is being used for now right and I'm sure you know a lot of you are familiar with the concept of AI and that it has been there for a long time but of late you know start, especially since the last decade it has it has uh, started becoming a part of our daily life so we interact with artificial intelligence on a daily basis now and now let's take a look at some of the um, examples some of the demonstrations that will help us understand how powerful AI can actually be yeah so I'm just, uh, I'm starting to sharing my screen with all of you. And we'll uh, try to take a look at some of these uh, interesting examples that I have uh, for all of you. Uh, please allow me a moment. Um,
Okay, maybe I'll go ahead and share my whole screen. Yeah. So I hope that you are able to see it now. And uh, yes, uh, great. So now the first video that we that I'm uh, that we I'm going to uh, play for all of you is uh, going to tell us how powerful a machine can become or how helpful a machine can become rather when it is able to understand uh, what uh, what is happening in the world by looking at it, right? So just like we have the ability of vision, we are allowing our machines also to be intelligent enough to have that ability of vision, right? By using cameras and uh, like we are using them for different kind of applications. So the video that we have uh, is going to give us a glimpse of how powerful uh, uh, and helpful computers can be if they can look at, look at the world and understand it. So here you can see that the computer is looking at uh, these two people in the frame and it is able to understand whether a particular person is wearing the safety vest, the hard hat, safety goggles and gloves. So you can see that these two persons are not wearing gloves. So the computer recognizes that gloves are off. There is a hard hat, there are safety goggles and there is a safety vest also. Right? So that is something that uh, a computer can understand just by looking at people. Right. So we just saw uh, like one of the examples of uh, how like, artificial intelligence can help us when it comes to looking at the world and identifying uh, what is what is happening with the world. Right. And I'm going to share like a few more uh, uh, examples of how how we can use computer vision for different kind of examples and uh, how, like what all information can be gathered from the world just by looking at it. So. Uh, let me just play another video for all of you. Yes. So it can recognize if there is a fire, the computer can look at it and recognize that uh, there is a fire uh, going on. Can recognize if somebody is littering on the road you know if you're throwing uh, something on the road the computer can recognize that as well it can count the number of animals that are there on the farm right so you can see that all these cows are labeled are being recognized by a computer probably a drone that has a camera fitted on it and which is going on uh, above the farm can also detect if there is a person that that has fallen down uh, so that is also something computers can recognize now and just just try to uh, try to imagine what kind of applications and what kind of solutions it can lead to if being used uh, for senior citizens and the vulnerable populations it can recognize breaking ins uh, in in the houses Yes, so these are some of the applications that we have of uh, computer being able to look at the world like we do and come up with uh, information, right? Extract useful information out of that. So Another, uh, just, just on that, yeah, sure. uh, so like some of the examples that we saw, right? So uh, the different uses, use case can be like a drone fitted with a camera that is going around. If you have to, let's say, identify where maximum plastic pollution is in a river or maybe in an area, right? It can, I'm assuming AI can help it detect the different uh, materials as plastic or not and inform where maximum concentration is. And I think similarly for wildfires and uh, catching poachers in forests as well, right? 
Yes, absolutely. And uh, if you if you think about uh, the places which is very difficult for human beings to reach and especially which can be dangerous, right, like the wildfires that Safin mentioned, or if let's say there is an oil spill in the middle of an ocean, it's very difficult for people to actually go there and verify, right, before we can uh, start cleaning it up. So can we use artificial intelligence there and try to identify that, hey, you know, there is an oil spill in, in, in a particular part of the ocean, or let's say there is a wildfire and there is a particular group of vulnerable or let's say endangered animals which are there in the forest, right? And they need to be rescued immediately. So I think these are the kind of solutions that we are going to be talking about with our students also when they come to the AI startup school. Yes, so moving on, right? Let's say, uh, let talk about the second uh, kind of uh, application that AI has, listening to the world, right? So I'm sure that, you know, a lot of you have been using your uh, digital assistant, right? You have been, uh, you might be using uh, like uh, Siri, you might be using Alexa, you might be using the Google Assistant, Cortana and whatnot, right? So that is an example of artificial intelligence being able to understand human language, right? Uh, and I'm just going to give you a small demonstration of how I can use my uh, digital assistant and let's see what all it can do for us. So I'm going to start talking to my Google Assistant and let's see if it can recognize my voice or not. Hey Google, what time is it? 11.42 a.m. Right, so it can tell me the time, that is one, right? Basic stuff. Let's, uh, let's give something more complicated. Hey Google, can you tell me a joke? This one is an acquired taste. What is the most shocking city in the world? Electricity. Okay, so the joke goes, what is the most shocking city in the world? And the answer is electricity. So, fun, but okay, still, so I'm sure, funny for a lot of us. Okay, so let's see if it can sing a song for us, right? Hey, Google, sing me a song. Read this song just for you. Your assistant. It has the lyrics also and a very nice music also in the background. I hope that you are able to hear it. Call for you, mail for you, chat with you, laugh with you, sing for you, even play games and have a many bases. Nice. Yes, so that was an essentially a song on what all Google Assistant can do for us. But yeah, you, you get the idea, right? And then now again, start thinking about the accessibility applications of these, right? Somebody who is... Uh, let's say who is uh, uh, who is limited, uh, who has limited mobility or uh, has other kind of restrictions, right? How useful can it be if we have these kind of applications enabled for them? And you know, if we start creating solutions that can help the vulnerable population uh, of of our society, so I think that can be uh, a very interesting application to look at for us and our students as well. Another very uh, useful uh, and a very fun thing that has come up when it comes to computer being able to understand our uh, language is this. So this is a solution. It's called DAL-E and it is essentially uh, an AI system that can process text and that can understand human language, right? So this is a demonstration where uh, you can ask DAL-E to come up with different kind of images for you. Right. And it is all based on the text prompt that we give up. Right. So right, let's say I give the text prompt as I want a, a armchair in the shape of, let's say, an avocado. And you can see, right, that these are all the images that are generated by the computer just by listening to this text that we have given. Right? If I change the text, I want a lamp in the style of, let's say, a donut. So you can see that all of these are now lamps which are in, in style of a donut, right? Or a lamp which is imitating a donut. See, so you get the idea, right? And this is all happening. This is not prefed. This is not, uh, you know, not a rule that if the user chooses this, show this. It is nothing like that. It just looks at the prompt that we have given to it and it comes up with its own uh, images and own uh, visuals, right? That is something that is extremely interesting. If you might want to try this out with your students also, 
we have a like a store front that has the word open ai written on it right so let's say your student uh, like uh, our students come up with a idea of a, of designing a physical store and they are looking at hey how should i design the front of this store so they can use artificial intelligence to come up with that so let's say a store front that has the word uh, let's say uh, peekaboo written on front of it so you get these different visuals right that you can have as the front of the store then you have a box of tissues that has peekaboo written on it you have a can of soda let's say that has sgd written on it so you you, you get all of these uh, interesting ideas right and again this is all generated by artificial intelligence so if you have an artist and you say hey I want you to draw me a can of soda with SGD written on it. Just like how their brain will start functioning, something similar happens with artificial intelligence also. Although it is, it cannot be as creative as a human being can as of now. But yeah, we 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 can all see that it's still uh, pretty creative when it comes to um, uh, coming up with visuals, you know, and understanding language and processing it as well. so that was uh, another uh, interesting application of artificial intelligence when it comes to understanding uh, what is happening in in our world and what what is being spoken and uh, how to make sense of it another very interesting example that we would like all uh, all of you to take a look at is this so this is uh, a solution that i and sasin stumbled upon yesterday itself it's called scrubly and i'm sure you know that all of your students and a lot of you also are very uh, fond of gifs right gifs the moving images that we have uh, on our social media on our uh, like messaging platforms and all that so this is a platform that lets us uh, create uh, our own gifs using some doodles right so i'm just going to show you how it looks like So, so you can try this out side by side on the link you can see there it's scrubly.com you can just try it alongside as well so this is the link that is there all of you are most welcome to try this out but yeah please make sure that once you have done it uh please come back because it's going to be like a lot of fun for all of you <laughs> yeah so once you have done that uh you arrive at this platform click next and then uh, follow the instruction then click next okay i think i'll have to stop sharing my camera to webex before i can uh access this so i'm going to start sharing my screen again so i'll click start i'll click next next yes so you can see that now this is uh again using artificial intelligence this platform can recognize my body and it can overlay like a doodle on my body if you want you can go ahead and remove the background also so it is just the doodle so now what happens is wherever i go this doodle also goes right like if i move my hands like this the doodle also moves its hand like this you see right so this is again based on artificial intelligence and then uh, because you know it is able to understand where the human being is in the photo and then it is able to track the motion also and if you want you can do like a bunch of stuff with this and uh, try to record this audio also you know so you can play some music and uh, move to this move to the uh, music like move to the beats and if you want you can record uh, this whole movement also so recording is automatically starting now and i can like maybe dance it's a good idea to introduce artificial intelligence to your students and you know what all computer can do and again this is just the fun stuff because we want uh, and now you see the recording playing so i have stopped moving now but the doodle still moves so you can save it and you can start sharing it with your friends and family and you know have like loads of fun and maybe ask them to try this out as well so this is another fun example uh, of artificial intelligence that we have yeah so please make sure that you know uh, you share this with your students and uh, uh, you know get them to try this out and again the okay. so that is that that is one idea of uh, using artificial intelligence right and again the uh, basic idea is to get your students excited that hey this is so much fun 
and then talk to them about what are the useful applications. That is something that we are, as it is going to do uh, in the AI startup school, right? Now, the last thing that we would want you to take a look at is the answer to the question that, but hey, how does AI actually learn, right? So how does it able to, how is it able to understand? Because we know that how we learn as human beings, but how do computers learn? So this simulation that we have on our screens right now is going to tell you how a computer learns when it becomes, you know, or when it is trying to become intelligent, when it is trying to acquire artificial intelligence. So this is a, a demo of a self-driving car and how does it learn to drive on its own? So you will see that when I start running the simulation for all of you, you'll be able to see that first of all, there is a lot of errors that these self-driving cars make, but uh, later on, slowly, some of the cars other cars crash, but one of the cars will find its way out. It will crash at some other place. But then in the next revision, only the good things from the previous revision carries over, right? And then it moves again. And it is like, if you, if you remember Darwin's uh, theory of evolution, right? Survival of the fittest. So every good thing or every correct thing that artificial intelligence learn in one revision goes to the other revision right and then it uh, builds upon that that is the idea so let's take a look at this uh, simulation again and try to associate uh, with what i've just uh, talked about you know so you see all the cars crash at the beginning in the first generation but now there was one car that was able to move a little farther in second generation in third generation you will see that these two cars move a little even like, even further and then they also crash then the next generation starts and you will see that the layout also keeps changing. So the cars are able to make a sense of how to move, right? And how to navigate different kinds of turns also. And you will see here are your number of generations. So we are on generation number six right now. As the number of generation keeps increasing, you will see more and more cars are able to travel a longer distance. And that is the idea of artificial intelligence. You know, you keep training it. The machine keeps training itself. Rather, I'm not doing anything. These machines are training themselves, right? So slowly, you will see that they are able to make sense of uh, what the world is and how to, you know, uh, carry themselves in that particular world also. Right. So, yes, yeah, so this is to conclude, you know, the uh, information sharing session on artificial intelligence uh, by talking about how does an AI actually learn and all the other things also that we saw, right? Uh, listening to the listening to human language or looking at the world and standing happens in the same thing. It will listen to me saying, play me a song, play me a song, play me a song again and again. And then after one instance, it will be able to recognize that I'm asking it to play a song. Yes, uh, so that is there. That is it from my end. Uh, and I'll hand it over to Safin now for uh, concluding remarks. Thank you so much. Thank, thanks a lot, Anit. And that was very interesting, especially Scroobly, you know, that we fumbled upon yesterday. And I hope everyone tries it out. Very interesting, right? If you create your own gym. So before I end, I just wanted to share one very interesting thing. Uh, this is something I came across um, recently. You know, you've heard a lot of deep fake where AI is coming up with images of people. And take a look at this picture. I don't think you can really look at this picture and say that it's not real. Look at this, right? I mean, the picture, and I'm scrolling down, you'll keep seeing similarly, right? A lot of pictures that you see all kind of real. But the interesting thing is, none of these are real people. These are all AI generated. Um, and as you come down, you know, I'm, I'm just simply scrolling down. You keep seeing, you know, one person's image gradually transforming into another. Right, keep looking at this. Right, so and it's, it's very important, difficult to understand which is real, which is fake today. And so it's important that students understand about AI, understand the ethical complications. How do you build your uh, AI responsibly and become creators in the AI world? So that's what we hope to do through the program and through the curriculum as well. And I'll just show you the last bit. It just keeps scrolling. When you come down, for example, these pictures, right? So I have this scroll here. I can reduce the age. It's one image. It's from youth to adulthood and then old age, right? This is how a person looks. Similarly, the eyes, I can change the eyes of a person, increase and decrease it. So these are all, again, you know, some of the photo uh, filters and photo editing apps that you see where you can remove red eye, you can increase or decrease eyes, your smile can be increased, decreased, all just from one photo. 
it's all all thanks to ai and ai is evolving with age and you can change the perspective you can even change your poses from you know front view to side view you can change your mood look at the emotions changing right again look at this she's kind of neutral here she's starting to smile and it's no no big smile here different things and again gender you can change the gender of a person it's a woman here now as i keep scrolling you know um, the hair reduces the facial expression changes gender changes again you can change the race and ethnicity of the people here different things that ai allows you to do and these are some of the very cool things that get excited students on ai and then they want to learn more and try the hands on build using ai to ultimately solve real world problems using ai otherwise just a cool tool right? we just want to ensure that they use it to solve real world problems Uh, so that is the main idea of the program, and I see that RP Singh sir is joined. So in case you're there, would you like to address our audience? Hi, Sahil. Uh, I was there in the session, and it's a nice program. Congratulations for putting it together, and I hope uh, that people can get the benefit the way it has been intended. And I would like to urge the Who's the dominant teachers are participating in this program so that the message propagates down to the students? CBSE has been at the forefront of using and advocating the use of emerging technology in the various uh, fields that uh, schools are involved, so that the students, when they are embarking on the journey after their schools. they can take up the future careers and the teachers are also oriented to what is coming down the line in the next five years of emerging tech so that they can help the student to take up these careers and basically they can make them better prepared so our students are also future ready but more importantly our teachers are future relevant so the topics that they are teaching are relevant to the students when they pass into the school and they can use these when they get into the job scenario So all the best to the team, and we hope uh, to reap the maximum benefit out of what we have planned. And we hope that all the teachers will take the benefit. Thank you so much, Sachin, for the possibility. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. And uh, rightly, like I said, hope you know more schools join and make good use of this program. Um, that's all for today. In fact, you know, once you register, we'll get in touch with you for the trainings and the next steps. Thank you so much for uh, to everyone for your time today, for spending one hour with us, and uh, have a good rest of the day. So, thank you so much.